morning we are looking into the most dangerous addiction of our times the ones we have with our screens it's plagued adults seniors but the generation that has the most detrimental impact is our young on whom the screen addiction will have really no you know you can't get out of it really screen addiction in kids is linked to a range of development disorders many children aged 7 and 8 who struggle with eye contact are increasingly getting diagnosed with autism research indicates that preschool children exposed to more than 2 hours of screen time daily face an increased risk of ADHD unregulated use of phones or screens of any kinds can sort of stunt your neural development and increase screen dependency and as we all know it's not just limited to india right it's a global problem so in states what did they do states like indiana louisiana have implemented laws to ban complete use of any kind of cell phones in classrooms recognizing the distractions posed by apps like tiktok instagram etc in europe specifically in netherlands what did they do as an experiment they banned all mobile phones schools realized that students were using their phones to bully uh, for sexual exploitation share videos of physical attacks from their peers etc so for four years they ensured that the classrooms were without phones and what did the official report say that the culture had been transformed but that's in europe a formula that us is trying to emulate now but does that really apply to india can we have an education system without phones or screens we will try and answer that question over the next few minutes but first up since it's got to do with screen addictions only schools cannot be blamed here or cannot take the full responsibility as well we all know it starts at home so we spoke with parents in india's metros to try and understand what are their screen habits with their kids this is a fascinating one take a look i agree partially because uh, one way it is good and another way it is uh, use how you are going to use so it when uh, it comes to the age and uh, school children it is better to give them at after a uh, certain age that they should know when to use when not to use i i really welcome about this uh, actually you know even my kids are getting spoiled because of this uh, mobile phones and all so i really welcome this the development of brain and they can think the phone is actually making them think in a way only narrow, one way yeah, in narrow it's making it narrow i think so yeah they will live because eventually they have to spend time at some place right so they have to uh, spend their energy so they will turn out to this kind of a thing board games and other things yeah um i think it's a good decision that they decided to ban it because i believe a mobile phone especially it reduces the attention span at least that's what it happens with me so whenever i'm studying i try to keep my phone away everything is depends on how you use it everything has advantages and disadvantages it depends on how you would like to choose your ways that's a good self control a person's control if he can handle it well it doesn't matter if he can that is his problem a digital detox is good too but then you can't really now you need a mobile phone because not if okay fine if not for studies then for communication for emergencies and it's just better to have a mobile phone it's very handy total detox yeah, not total detox but i believe half can be good uh, it depends on how the individual treats how they see the you know how the idea of what they see through it and also if parents are strict the ban in us it is it is a good step which is taken by the government but what i personally feel that india is so much digitalized and so much dependent on technology 
that it is not so easy for India to take that step. Completely banning something is not a solution. It's more like the sensitization of the, you know, the subject is important. You must preach in the school that what all you can do, how you can benefit with the technology. I come from a technology company, right? So we all are leveraging technology to use it for a better betterment of our lives, right? There should be there should be some steps can be taken uh, by government for. Uh, you know balancing of content uh, like kids uh, should not watch at the uh, at the early stage like five years or six years we have been watching mobiles when they were born when they are born they are given mobiles these days we have nuclear single families so you know children to take care of our children properly we need some time and we put them on a mobile to watch so our children are getting mobile from you know day one day two they're exposed to it and all of a sudden you are taking away something which is their life which is the way of life So I gave my younger one is six. I gave him two years back. At four years. At four years, yes. So he has a mobile, but you know it's generally cartoons and all playing. Okay. The older one, well, I gave him when he was about five, six years old. My younger uh, kid, uh, he is 1.5 years old, and he is not interested. And I'm, I'm also not interested to give him uh, a mobile. Maybe uh, this is my planning till three years of age. I will not give uh, him and mobile. Even if I have a five-year-old son. He doesn't have access to mobile as of yet. Wow. So. Uh, my my screen or everything is on the lock mode. The maximum he can do is if if he has access to my phone, he will just open the camera, click some photos, and keep it back. Yes, my child was exposed to social media, YouTube, and all these videos at a very young age because it was under parental guidance. But when it comes to giving him a personal phone, that happened few day, few years back during the COVID time. He was eight nine years old and. We all didn't know what to do, so the exposure started from there. I think so for our kids to maybe you know utilize their potential, it's important that they do not skip it, go to AI directly. Yeah. We should encourage them to do it themselves, right? Right now, my my son is very small. He's just five years old, so he's into art and craft and itself. So use your brain, use your hands, use your eye, eye hand coordination, use your motor skills. So you heard all the worried mothers over there wondering which age is the right one to give a screen, if at all, is banning even possible these days where if you are in an IB school, school which has digital classrooms, everything is happening on an iPad nonetheless. So what is the solution here? Let's try and get some answers with our guest this morning. Joining us now is Praneet Ungli. He is the trustee at the Sanskriti Group of Schools. Good morning, Praneet. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope you could hear some of those very worried mothers and others who said that, listen, we didn't have an option. I didn't want to give it to my child, but pandemic hit and what, did I, what could I do? So clearly, just to sort of start off on this discussion, I want to first get your view on, is this really a problem that schools are even addressing today? It's one thing to take a cue from the US or Europe, but we all know that the education standards in India are far better than what's happening in the West. So clearly, we don't need to emulate. What we do need to understand is how do we get a balance over here? So in your view, screen addiction, phone addiction, can it be addressed in the classrooms and can it be addressed by schools? The use of screens as far as they're limited to education is very useful. The, the challenges start occurring when the boundaries blur between when technology and screens are being used for entertainment and even more dangerously for connection and finding social purpose. So there needs to be a distinction where under parental or adult supervision of teachers, technology or the usage of screens can help in democratization of information access to up-to-date information and it's definitely a very important supplemental tool provided there are safe guardrails which are being done either by adults in the classroom or indeed by parents at home the challenge occurs not so much with the usage of smartphones in indian classrooms because the cultural context and the context of our country is different there are very few schools who would permit children to use smartphones in class there are a few but that's not the norm the challenge here is the usage of excessive unmonitored screen time 
outside the classroom context or outside parental supervision so there's a long term change change in habit post covid where young teen hmm. teenagers are now increasingly using it for purposes which are in the boundary of entertainment and even more for finding connection now these are many of the questions which parents raised or what is an appropriate age neuroscience and developmental psychology over here has some good clues to offer that there are actually parts in our brain which are responsible for exercising impulse control specifically the prefrontal cortex and that region of the brain which is meant to exercise impulse control is not developed till the age of 14 to 16 which is why teenagers have so much difficulty in sometimes auto regulating their emotions and that's also the where for very other important aspects there are controls there's there's a limit before which you can't drive it's the age of 18 there are restrictions by before which you can't uh drink there are restrictions on when you can marry similarly between the ages of 14 to 16 when the prefrontal cortex is not fully developed it's almost unfair to ask kids to exercise impulse control for something which is giving them a dopamine rush which is giving them rewards which is giving them a sense of a high and setting in place long term patterns so hold on pradeep are you saying don't give phones to kids before 14 and 15 like right when they are teenagers that's what you're saying i'm saying that phones before that particular age it's very important that they be with parental controls and access especially to social media because there's a conflation of usage of phones and usage of social media usage of phones for educational purposes or screens for educational purposes is very beneficial it needs to be with parental supervision but the use of rampant uncontrolled social media before the user before the ages of 14 to 15 is downright dangerous it's setting it's harming your long term social fitness it's potentially skewing the emotional mm-hmm. architecture you would find otherwise connection from face to face interaction with friends towards inordinately finding it in the virtual world right can it be done safely yes yeah, provided yeah since we are on the subject of yeah no i'm interrupting because uh, you know since we are on the issue of what age is right i just want to put out some who guidelines on the screen for our viewers as well so who clearly says that there should be no screen exposure to kids under 2 no screen exposure at all then from 2 to 5 they say limited to about 1 hour on weekdays or about 3 hours over the weekends but only use it for educational programs and then 5 and older there is no specific guideline really over there so who after you know studying this pattern but i wonder if this is updated really because you know screens and their engagement with our lives the fact that they are part of your family part of your day to day life now has developed over the past 5 years so one wonders how this study has actually come out but no screen before 2 from 2 to 5 only for about an hour every day and for 6 and above and then if you listen to pradeepi saying that listen uh, only you know under supervision and guidelines till the time you are able to hit your 18 i wonder how uh, parents are going to manage this but my question to you pranith is this when we look at screen exposure and screen addiction it doesn't always start with you know doom scrolling it doesn't always start with just social media apps it starts with cartoons it starts with eating only while my favorite cartoon or my favorite music is playing on youtube it starts with okay uh, let me keep the child quiet on the airline because too much of a ruckus is being caused which then develops into later classrooms also using them then later you know studies also happening on the ipad and then it's a spiral really you don't know where to stop so how does one tackle that because a lot of parents will come out and say that hey what are you talking about digital uh, you know screens the fact is i'm getting all homework on an ipad a lot of ib schools operate completely on an ipad there are no books there are no you know sort of curriculum either which comes in forms of physical books or writing so again the usage of technology is inevitable technology is going to play a very important role in the lives of the generation which is currently coming up 
and when used for the purposes of education is a completely different use case for when it's a substitute for either parenting or social connection or just having the child quiet those are very different kind of use cases so whenever technology is used to supplement as opposed to supplant and replace real life decisions or connections else etc that's when it gets into a problematic sphere as you rightly identified it starts much before social media usage it's it's giving the child the cartoon in order to, so the child has the meal or you know it's really crushing the attention span at that stage where these are there's a creeping normalization of habits which parents aren't even widely aware of as you mentioned it's only over the last 4 or 5 years that the tech usage has really blown up so whether it's the who reports mm. or indeed the uk and us who are really now beginning to understand the long term implications and it's not dissimilar to how the danger of giving child indiscriminate sugary foods has now become prominent where the mm. the recognition of long term nutritional habits of what you're setting up as a child the implications on that as an adult since this is such a new phenomena we're all coming to terms with it right now and the only way out is setting healthy habits and setting controlled habits from a very very early stage is very difficult to tell a child who's been brought up on a diet of cartoons you know moving on to reels to suddenly expect them at age 10 to 12 to change long term habits and patterns and the starting point it's schools who have to play a role but there are important rituals at home for example during meal times if parents are going to be glued in screens either for work or other purposes and are going to avoid eye contact then there is a sudden creeping normalization of a behavior where people are withdrawing socially and we don't even recognize that it's become you know a dangerous new normal hmm so you've taken Famous it a step further which is what i was going to get this, to that uh, even before meal time starts even even before meal time actually starts if the kid is going to watch their parents on the screen all the time that's what he will think is normal he or she will think is normal as well so it all starts with habits that are being inculcated because with very very young kids it's monkey see monkey do but it's easy to say very difficult to sort of implement especially in the current setup where all families are largely nuclear it's this is a largely metro problem this is a largely upper middle class uh, you know sort of affluent uh, family issues as well what is your solution then pranith as we draw this discussion to a close i want to understand do you have some tips for parents for um, 